Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I am gonna go over all the things I do to plan my trip. These are the steps that I take for international trips as well as trips within the United States. This was a highly requested video. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna do like a mock planning session where I go through the steps of how I would book a trip on screen. So without further ado, let's get right into it. How do I decide where I go? I get that question a lot. It depends on what places I have on my bucket list. But if you have a place that you always wanted to go to, or you're just trying to figure out when you should go. One way you could do it is, let's say you really want to go to Italy, you want to go to Rome. I would look up the best time to visit Rome on Google so you can know what months to visit. Let's say you don't really know where you want to go, but you have a certain time period that you can go. Let's say September, you have time off and you want to travel during September. I would Google best places to visit in September and a list of things will pop up. So those are like two ways that you can go about planning where you're going. If you're going to a place that is fully dependent on weather. If you're going to a Caribbean destination, I recommend going when it's warm out because besides the beach, there really isn't that much to do. And then you have to decide how many days that you can go. So that really will depend on where you can go. If you only have four days, you obviously can't travel too far away because that travel day does take up a big chunk of your time. But if you have over a week, nine days, you can have a bit more flexibility on where you're going. You have to ask yourself how many days that you can take off and then you can kind of plan a trip based on how many days that you have. That is the pre-travel question that you need to ask yourself. And now let's get into booking flights. I love booking flights. I find it fun and exciting. And the platform that I use for booking flights is Google Flights. I love the features that they have. You can search where you wanna go or they have an option where you can search anywhere. And so if you have flexibility or you don't really know where you wanna go and kind of get some travel inspiration, they tell you when a route is at a good price. They tell you if it's an average price, high price, low price. If it's low, I would recommend booking it. You can also search by preferred airline. But basically I think they took all of like the best features from Skyscanner and all of these like airline apps and they put it into one. So I highly recommend using Google Flights. And another tip with using Google Flights, and I get this question a lot, like how do you know when to book a flight? Don't book your flight too far in advance. Like let's say it's summer and you wanna to go to Italy next summer. Don't book your flight right now, I would wait. I like to book my international flights like around five months, six months, I'll start looking five months in advance. They do offer though like good deals, maybe a month in advance. So if I wanted to check a flight right now and I'll share my screen. Let's go to Google Flights. Let's say, for example, I want to go to Rome. I can see right now it's the 14th. Obviously, if you want to go to Rome this weekend, it's very expensive. But if you look at August, there's some better deals. We have a flight on the 29th as it's highlighted in green, which means it's a better deal. Your round trip, let's say you did it until the 6th of September, it said 585 round trip on this airline called NORS. I've actually never heard of it. But you can also see different carriers for that specific flight. I fly One World, so if I were actually searching, I would go to airlines. This is how you can pick a specific airline. So I like to fly One World, and then if I'm going to Rome, for example, I would do a, a non-stop. So you go to all filters, press non-stop, and then there's usually only one flight out from New York to Rome. So for this airline specifically, those two days aren't the cheapest, but like, let's say I really wanted to go. As you can see, if I'm booking for this month, it's very expensive, but there's like a, a gem of a price, August 8th to the 16th, it's 615, not bad and you can book that flight. And now you can see on the map when are good deals. So September, it looks like there's some great deals. This is giving me ideas. See, this is why. Go on Google Flights, play around. You can see what is a good deal. Like October isn't loading for some reason. So October is more expensive. Now you can see the average of October. It's over a thousand for a round trip. So you get the hint with that. So let's say we're gonna go to, let's go to Cancun. We all could use a Caribbean getaway. So let's see how much it would be in August. It gets more expensive. There's a better deal though right here. September is pretty good. Once you see these green, that means like you're in a really good place. So now you can see like what is the average price for that specific route. So it's a really great way to see 
like how much it should cost, how much is it good. So obviously a good price would be under $300. So when you're looking and you find a flight for under 300 for this specific route, I would go ahead and book it. If it's 350, it's not a bad price, but here we have, you know, $400. Now it's kind of getting more expensive. And oh my gosh, do you see this? February 15th. Maybe it's a Valentine's Day weekend, so that weekend is a bit more expensive. So this is just a great way to kind of travel plan and forecast, whoa, forecast for yourself when you are booking flights. Now let's test out that anywhere flight. New York, anywhere, and we can do specific dates or you could do flexible dates. But let's just keep these 8th through the 16th. You can see throughout the world, what is a good flight? Like maybe you want to go somewhere, you don't know where you want to go, but you don't want to spend too much money on a flight. You can use that feature to kind of get some travel inspiration to see where you could go. And then if you wanted, you could just do flexible dates. So click your date, do flexible. Let's do a weekend in October. Let's see where we can go. What's good? Miami is looking good. Aruba isn't too bad. And Aruba has grid weather all year round. We have Boston. So anyway, you get the hint. And again, you could do your favorite filters, non-stops, and you can pick your preferred airline with that. So that's how I kind of play around with flights. I hope that was helpful. Now let's get into booking hotels. I like to use booking.com to book my hotels. They have a really great map feature. I like their search features as well. You can pick a budget. You, let's say, let's just do Rome, for example. We have our date. Here's why I like to use booking.com. I feel like they have a really great search feature. They pop up naturally. It's just like a random list of like their featured hotels. You can pick your budget. You can also do different features, breakfast included. You could do a rating. For me personally, I like to do it on a map because I'm a very map visual person. And I like to pick a balcony when I travel, especially in Europe. That's not really the case for US travel. And now we can show on map. And they're gonna pull up different options with a balcony for those nights. And how I like to go in is I like to just hover over each one, see kind of a range of like what the price point would be. You might be wondering, that's great and all to do a map feature, but how do you know where to book that specific hotel? So we're gonna go on our computer again. So first we're gonna go into Google Maps, three lines on the left side, and we're gonna to go to saved, and then we're gonna go over to maps. Now I use this feature whenever I travel, obviously we can see I have so many maps created. This is how I organize my trips on a map. Let's create a map. Let's create one so we know exactly what we need to do. So so let's just do Rome, for example, because I feel like we're using Rome as an example. <laughs> it's where you're gonna type Rome. So when I think of Rome, I think of the Colosseum. Colosseum. Oh my God, how do you spell the Colosseum? There it is. All right, so we search the Colosseum. I like to press add to map and I close out. This is just a little marker. So as we zoom out, we can see there is the Colosseum. Great, so that would be a great place to stay nearby. Another thing to do in Rome is go to the Trevi Fountain. So we're gonna click Trevi Fountain, add to map, close out, great. Now we're kind of seeing where things are located on a map and that will make finding a hotel in a better place. So for example, if we have this and this, there would be no reason to stay over here. You know what I'm saying? Google knows the most popular things is also the Pantheon. We can add that to our map. Um, Piazza Navona, we can also add that to our map. So now we're kind of seeing where the most popular places are to visit. So when we're looking for our hotel, we can definitely look around this area because that is where all of the like touristy things are. And it would be great because we don't want to depend on any transportation. Ideally walking is the best way to get around. So now as we go to our booking.com, we can see like, yes, this is the exact area that we would wanna stay in. And so for me, if I was actually booking a hotel right now, I like to hover over images so I can just see like, that looks nice. Like for example, this has a really good rating score. It has an 8.9. On booking.com, I like to see that. Let's see if there's any bad ones. Like this one, I probably wouldn't book because it has a 7.4 rating. I like to book hotels that are at least eight stars, ideally 8.5 and above. So that's what I like to look at. So that one was kind of catching my eye. Where did it go? 
right here. Let's check it out. Another reason why I like booking.com is because they have great images. Also, when you're booking your hotel, you can know exactly what room you're booking. So you can see the double room, you click double room, and you can scroll to see what exactly that double room looks like. So this one doesn't have a balcony, which is a problem because remember, I wanted a balcony, so I think we have to scroll down a bit more. Balcony, here it is. It must be the junior suite. So this is a room with a balcony, and for example, I like personally booking balconies. I find that they have great views, but if you wanted like a place to stay in Rome with a view, we can go back to our search and maybe we want to, let's do the Colosseum. It maps out the Colosseum neighborhood. That's the Colosseum. And now we can kind of look at places to stay with maybe a Colosseum view, if that's like what you're looking into. Usually like this, for example, has a view if a hotel has a specific feature, like a great view, they usually have it on their image. So when you're browsing through like this, you can kind of know, okay, like that's gonna be the place to stay. So if you're looking for a view, like this is pretty epic, right? Like, are you kidding? That would be really cool to wake up to. Oh, and there's a jacuzzi. See, this is how I find places. And then for me to actually book, I always look at the reviews. I find that they're really good on booking.com. And so this is a great property. You can also save this, like you can heart it and save it to your account. So when you are browsing for places to stay, especially like this, this one kind of seems like it would be booked out a lot. You can save your favorite properties and that way you can refer back to it and see what's available for your travel date. If you want to have a really good deal, a really great view, I would look in advance, like don't even look at a date, just start looking at places that you would like to stay at and kind of have a dream list. And that way, when you are planning your trip, you can kind of see when that place is available because usually like places like that, that aren't a part of a hotel, there's limited rooms that have that specific view. And those are the ones that get booked out further in advance. So if you are dead set on having that Coliseum view, that's because that one's going to go by very quickly. They also clump in hotels and also like private listings for bed and breakfast, apartment style places to stay. So it kind of searches everything. If you don't like staying in B&Bs, you can just search for hotels and hotels would only pop up. So they have really great search features. Someone asks, I always struggle with accommodation. Should I book an Airbnb, hotel, B&B? How do you research where to stay? So that really depends on your personal preferences. I find within the US, I normally stay at hotels. And then when I travel to Europe, I normally stay in a B and B just because I find that they have really unique options with the places that I travel to. Like for example, in Venice, I stayed in a BnB b that had like private water docks. So we could sit outside, watch the gondoliers go by. It was such a unique experience. Al and I, we also went to Florida this year and we just stayed at a hotel because it just had more of like the amenities, had a pool and that kind of thing. So if you're staying in a major city, I find that hotels might be a better option because usually there's like a free breakfast or they just have more amenities. Where as if you're traveling to a random small village, if you're traveling mostly in Europe, I find there's a lot more B&Bs. The reason why I don't really look on Airbnb is I got so sick of tired of finding a really good room and then the cleaning fees, service fees, all these fees were added below it and it ended up being so expensive. So I like to look at booking.com because the price you see is the price that you're gonna pay and there's no like hidden fees, except if you're traveling to Europe, for example, there's gonna be like city taxes and stuff like that. Or in the US, there may be like resort fees that are not included that are due at the property, but they're very clear on that. So. That is why I like booking.com to book all of my accommodations. I just find it the best way to book things. Google Maps is my favorite way to organize my travels. I have all kinds of maps created that help me know what to do in each place. This is my map that I made for my trip to Tuscany and Florence last year. I mapped out the wineries and I mapped out some restaurants that I went to. But as you can see, we have what I mapped out in Florence and there's a lot to do in Florence. So we actually stayed over here. We stayed by the train station, but Florence is so small. So everything in this distance was very walkable. So I picked out some restaurants that I wanted to eat at. 
I picked out some bars. I picked out some attractions like the Ponte Vecchio and also the Uffizi Gallery. Now that I mapped out everything on this Google map, it was so much easier to like plan what we wanted to do during the day. And you can kind of see where things are clumped. Like this is a really good example for Paris because that was a bigger city and a bit harder to plan because there's so much to do. And here we go, Paris 2023 opened in my maps. We had a lot of things that we wanted to see. And so we were staying over here by the Eiffel Tower. So we had a lot of Eiffel Tower things that we wanted to do. This is where the museums were. So we kind of clumped this area together on one day and some shopping that I wanted to do. And then over here was a cute neighborhood to walk around in, more shops. And so by having everything put on a map and clumped together, I could then plan my itinerary around it because I could bunch the tower in one day, you know, the Louvre, the gardens in one day, and Les Marais in one day, just because everything is clumped together. So I hope that makes sense. And another pro tip with Google Maps is that you can download this map on your phone. I'll show you how to do it here. You can download the map that you make. So when you are in a foreign country or you don't have really good cell phone reception, all that work that you did, you can, when you open up your Google Maps in the destination, you can see where you map things. All right, next up is activities, how I plan my activities, and how do I know what to do in each place? If you're going to a major city there's usually more things to do and you can honestly just search like things to do in x y and z on google i think TripAdvisor is also a great place to just see like what is a good thing to do like but if i'm booking like a tour i like to use get your guide they have like different tours in each place and they also have really great day trip tours but if you were curious i would go on get your guide i will leave a link down below in the description box all right so this is get your guide they have really fun things to do. So let's say we're going to Rome, always Rome, right? And so on this, you can also see like, what are the top things to do in Rome? So we have, well, this is such a big city. This website even goes further on like our best things to do for first timers. And you can see the top activities here. So the Colosseum, I would think if you've never been to Rome, going to the Colosseum is a must. And also the Vatican, even though I've never been to the Vatican and I've been to Rome three times, so I need to do that. And look, there's even a guided tour from Rome. Amalfi Coast Post Town Day Trip with a Coastal Cruise. On this website alone, you can see all the different things that you can do in Rome. Like a Rome street food tour with local guide. That would be something that I would like to do. We want to do it. All you do is pick your date. Let's say we're going in August and we book and there we go. There's two starting times. So that's how I would book activities. They also have an app, which I find really helpful. If you are going to book a lot of tours, I would download the app. You can see all of your upcoming tours in one place. Not only do they have like European like things to do, they also have things to do in the US and all kinds of different places. Pre-booking activities. Should you pre-book? Yes, yes, I think you should pre-book. I pre-booked everything for my trip to Paris and I went in April and it was so busy. So if you are going to an extremely or busy place and when you pre-book, your tickets in advance you don't have to wait in line to buy tickets i know for the louvre in paris bought our tickets in advance if you didn't have your ticket in advance they do it by like a time slot the line to buy tickets i think they had to wait like two hours to buy just to buy the ticket to come back later so you obviously don't want to spend your valuable travel time waiting in line to buy tickets so i highly recommend booking tickets in advance the only con with that is like you don't know what the weather's going to be like i mean ideally i would book the museum day on the rainy day unfortunately i wish travel was a bit more spontaneous you can just go to the museum whenever you do kind of have to plan everything in advance if you want to not spend a lot of time waiting in line for things. It's just much easier and you can also just kind of plan your itinerary better because sometimes when you don't have anything planned, you wake up and you're like, well, what do I do? Okay, restaurants, how do I pick where I wanna eat? For me, restaurants are a big deal. I like to eat good food when I travel. I find it is like the best way to experience a place. Well, how do I find restaurants? I either go on Google Maps, I type restaurant in and I can, I can kind of see like what top places in that city. Also, I find TripAdvisor is also just a great way to search for restaurants, search features. So I usually do restaurants with a scenic view just because I just can't get over my scenic views. You have to be wary about those restaurants though because sometimes the food isn't as good because they're really good for the view and not food. So for those places, 
Sometimes I just like to go and grab a drink there and then I'll go to another like restaurant that it maybe has better reviews but doesn't have a view if you know what I'm saying. And I also like to find restaurants within walking distance to where I'm staying. So if I'm tired for one night or just don't wanna to venture too far away from where I'm staying, I like to find restaurants that are just like within walking distance. And if you are traveling to a very popular place, could be anywhere, make your reservations in advance. That is my biggest tip because I was already searching for restaurants to eat at in Chicago and two places that I picked really booked for the night that I want to go. Logistics planning is also another thing that I like to do. When you're planning a trip, you need a document. If you're going with someone else as well, you can share this document, kind of like work on it together. I have a little template. And so this is basically just a generic template. Date, what we're doing that day, where we are, where we're staying and some notes. This can also be changed. Europe, April, this is how basically it works. Okay, so I have the date. As you can see, it is really detailed and we just kind of put in all the information that you would need to know mostly like time points. Now these were just rough itinerary, but it was really helpful to know like what we wanted to do for each place. I also like to print out that itinerary before we go. So we have a little printout of our day, how to get around. This depends again on where you're going. Some places you need to rent a car, some don't. I personally like, like to travel to places where you don't need to rent a car. In Europe, I've rented a car in Tuscany. The requirements for US people to rent a car in Europe, you need an international driver's license and a valid US license. That's all they ask for. And then my other favorite travel website, to plan how to get around places. Let's say we want to do Rome, but we want to do a day trip to Sorrento. How do you get there, right? I get that question like all the time. How do you get from Rome to the Amalfi Coast? I'm not gonna go over it in this video because it's very detailed. A great website for you to utilize is called Rome to Rio. And this website is just so cool because you can find out how to get from point A to point B. I find this is a lot more helpful within Europe itself because it's a bit harder to get around. Whereas the US, it's pretty much you can get an Uber. But for this, they have so many great public transportation options. So let's say we want to go to Rome and then you want to go to Sorrento. So it gives you a very clear way on how to get to Rome to Sorrento. So first, this option is by train. You can take a train from Rome to Naples and then another train to Sorrento. You could also do a bus and a train. They'll give you results for how to do that. Do a bus, just a bus. You could also drive, you could also fly. So this kind of maps out different ways that you could do things. Let's take a US example. What should we do, NYC? Sure. We're flying into New York JFK airport and we wanna know how to get to the Empire State Building. The AirTran train, you transfer to another train and you get to Penn Station and you walk. So this is a great website to play around with if you want to know how to get from point A to point B. And it shows you all these details on a map and it makes it, you can also see how long it takes. So that just takes an hour. The next question was about budget. If I have a budget while I travel, I don't have a specific number that I like follow, but of course I'm gonna be looking at the best flight deals. I'm gonna be looking at the average price for a hotel in a certain area. I think the biggest expense for me always deals with food and beverage. If we eat out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that's gonna be really expensive. I find that dinner restaurants, it's gonna be a minimum of a hundred for two people when we go out for dinner. So if you go to dinner every single night on your vacation, depending on how long that is, you can see how that adds up. And you also have lunches, drinks, desserts. So food does really add up. So now that we have all of our travel planning tip that I talked about in this video, let's go ahead and do a mock trip planning session. So like I said, I'm going to Chicago in about a few weeks and I actually have not done any planning for the trip. So this is a perfect opportunity to show you my exact steps on how and what I would do to plan it. So I already have my flight and hotel booked, but let's say I never been to Chicago before and I have no idea where to stay. The first thing that we're going to need to do is create our custom Google map and let's name our map Chicago 23. And now let's find things in Chicago. So we're actually going to Chicago for a concert. So the concert is at Soldier Field. So we're going to add that to our map and close out. Another thing to do in Chicago is go to Millennium Park, which is right here. I'm also gonna add that to our map. And I wanted to check out other things to do. So we're gonna go over to Get Your Guide and we're going to type in Chicago. And here we can see all of the top things to do in Chicago. So there's architecture, river cruise. This is the sky deck, which I find really interesting. I've been to another one in Chicago, so I actually really wanna do this. So we're gonna add 360 to our map. 
and we're going to add. And now we can kind of see where we would like to stay around. I know the downtown area is around here and here. So anything in this area would be a really good place to stay in. I already have booked my hotel. I'm not gonna share my hotel info, but I have stayed at the London House Chicago, which was a perfect location. And for hotels, I like to do red. I like to change the icon to a home. So that's kind of where our home base is. And now we're gonna kind of just add in more things that we wanna do and is the architecture river cruise. Now they don't tell you where you meet. Actually they do. Starting location is the Wrigley building. So if we wanted to go ahead and do this river cruise, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add the Wrigley building onto our map. And it's seeming like our hotel is in the perfect location. If I want to book this architecture river cruise, I'm going to just select our date and check availability. And it seems like they have all day long. So that's pretty cool. We can add to cart. Maybe we want to find some restaurants nearby our hotel, Chicago restaurants, and they always pop up like some popular ones right at the beginning. But if we go into our map, we can kind of just zoom in and find some more popular restaurants like the Purple Pig restaurant looks pretty good things that i look out in a restaurant is i look out you know for the price points that's kind of a more expensive restaurant but it has a ton of good ratings again more great ratings i feel like the food in chicago is really good so either way let's see if they have availability for the dates let's see saturday and it seems like they have availability all day long so i would make a reservation and then I'm gonna add that restaurant to our map. Restaurants, for some reason, I like to do green and I like to do the food sign. So now we're adding in some restaurants and it's so close to where. And then maybe we wanna get a drink. So let's go to TripAdvisor. So now I'm at Chicago's restaurants on TripAdvisor and I don't want restaurants. I actually want to go for like drink and let's do something with a scenic view. I always like doing that. And let's see what pops up. We have LH Rooftop. Not so good reviews. There's not many good reviews. Let's just take out bars and pubs and maybe there's more that comes up in different categories. Cindy's, I heard, is a really popular rooftop bar. I've never been to it. I've always wanted to go. So let's check this out. I probably have to make a reservation, but let's just add Cindy's on our map. And it's very close by, which is awesome. For drinks, for some reason, I like to do purple and a martini glass. So now we're kind of building out our custom map. We have all the things that we want to do. Now it's time to put it into our itinerary. So I kind of started already. This is just a template. You could do this on a Word document or Excel spreadsheet, it doesn't matter. I'm just inputting our travel information, but once we arrive into Chicago, I always like to figure out how I'm gonna get from the airport to downtown. So let's go to Rome to Rio and just see how far away the airport is. We're flying to O'Hare and we're going to the London House Chicago and let's see how we can get there. So they're going to map out the best way which is the cheapest but it takes 47 minutes. I think we'll probably just do an Uber or taxi and the price point is around 50 to 70 dollars and it only takes 22 minutes so that's what we're going to do. So on our itinerary I'm going to do 20 two minute Uber to hotel into hotel. I usually like to leave my hotel king code just in case they can't pull up the reservation for some reason, just to double check. And then at night, we probably wanna to go to that rest restaurant that we picked out on our map. It was called Sienna Tavern. Let's do 7 p.m. Sienna. And now our day one is kind of putting, getting put into place. The next day is our concert, but maybe we want to do that observation deck or the river cruise. So I'm gonna do 9 a.m. river cruise. And maybe after that, we could do the observation deck, maybe at noon. How far away are those things? So we could even do the Wrigley building and the 360 Chicago. What is it called? John Hancock Center. And now we can see how far away that is. So we could, to walk, it takes 14 minutes. Taxi doesn't really make sense because it's very busy. So a 14 minute walk. So we can kind of plan out how much time we would need in between the river cruise, which is an hour and a half, walk into the observation deck for our ticket time. So that's a great way to use Rome to Rio. And then that night would be the concert. So that's how I would build out this itinerary. So that is the exact way how I plan my trips. I hope you found this video helpful on planning your trip. Let me know if it was. I would love to hear your comments down below. I'm gonna continue working on this Chicago itinerary. With that, I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.